Steve walks early down the street with the brim pulled way down low. Ain't no sound but the sound of his feet. Machine guns ready to go. Are you ready? Are you ready for this? Are you hanging on the edge of your seat? Out of the doorway, the bullets rip to the sound of the beat. Say there, stranger. Remember me? I'm the stranger who stalks your sanity. Now, this time, in the fourth talk, I'm here to advise you, if I may, on how to convert the language of the 12-step recovery movement into a formula for the great recovery movement. And doing so, I'm going to concentrate on the core issues of the adult child syndrome, and self-love. Before I begin, I'd like to ask you to consider something for me. I'm sure you're aware that people who do YouTube videos often say something at the beginning of their material. And I have never said that. I have never asked anyone to do that. And I'm not going to ask you to do anything, but I will ask you if you have done something, that is to say, as the saying goes, uh, like, subscribe, push notification button, and so forth. I'm not asking you to do that, but I'm telling you that if you want to assist me in building this platform, building this channel, that would certainly help. I don't follow the analytics for my channel. I can't bear to look at them. And I don't do a lot of things that many content creators do in order to build their algorithm. Nevertheless, I've come to realize recently that the success I would like to see with The Great Recovery depends, of course, on building the algorithm and bringing more and more people to this message. So I call upon you to consider that. I'd also like to ask you what you think about the intro music. I think it's a bit harsh. I like it. It's 40 seconds long, which may be too long. Let me know if it's too long. I like the song. I like the beat. I have a preference for another song, and that would be The Hawk, which is sung by Richie Havens. And the lyrics were written by Chris Christofferson. And you'll find a link to that song in the description that goes directly to the page on Planetary Tantra in Nemata. So I have a preference for the hawk. The lyrics are really pertinent to the great recovery and the adult child. But uh, I don't know if you know this or not, but the costs and complications of getting a license for a few seconds of material like that uh, can be pretty extensive, and I haven't brought myself to the point of doing that yet. Final comment I want to make before I begin is about what I said about crosstalk in the recovery movement. I said that I wanted to apply the same rule here, but I might have misspoken. I did not mean to say that you do not reply to comments that others have made. Of course not. In fact, I just learned recently, believe us or not, that there is a like option for replies as well. So if you click the like option for the talk as a whole, apparently that builds the algorithm, but also going down the line of comments, you can like comments from other people. And apparently that also builds the algorithm. That's news to me. But the point I want to make is no crosstalk means no critical analysis or no dissing or interpreting what someone else says, dissing, discounting. Uh, rather, reply to the comment, do not make any derogatory statement about the comment or the person who has made the comment. And thank you very much. Now, oh, and not to forget, 
if you find a opening line, the stalker line, to be lame or naff, well, please let me know if you like it or if you don't like it. So, how about getting on to the enchanting idea of converting the 12 steps of the recovery movement? Well, from this uh, talk onward, I'm going to carry in the description the original language of the 12 steps. And as I take them on one by one, along with you, in a common process of invention, revision, I will state beneath each of those original steps the formulation of the converted language, okay? That way, with each new talk, you'll be able to refer to the description and see how the language is developing. Now, so far in the first talk of January 15th, I proposed a rough version of the first step. We admitted that we were powerless over alcohol, that our lives had become unmanageable. Convert. I admitted that I am targeted by the agenda and machinations of the predecites. Now that's a rough version. And I want to point out some essential guidelines for how to do these conversions. In the first place, I advise you not to use the word powerless, nor the word victim. And also, as far as possible, and this is an essential point that's come up before in my talks and in my concerns about what I call delivery, not to use the passive voice. However, that initial formulation uses the passive voice. I admit that I am targeted. That's the passive voice. I realize that I am constantly under the attack of the predecites who seek to render my life and that of others unmanageable and even unlivable. Now, I'm improvising here. To be under attack, to say you are under attack is a little bit better than to say you are targeted because that is passive voice. The trouble with passive voice, you'll find once you learn to recognize it, that it's used everywhere in the media to misdirect you from the perpetrators. So, for instance, you typically hear that uh, measures were proposed for the prevention of the popsicle outbreak. And you'll always hear the passive voice. You won't hear about who proposed it, even if it's an agency, or who is the head of the agency who proposed it. You will generally hear such announcements, which are mind programming announcements, being made. Uh, that's passive voice, by the way. You will generally hear the talking heads of the media make these announcements in that way, in a misdirecting way that immediately takes your attention from the agencies who are performing these acts, who are stating these protocols, who are pushing these agendas, you see? So passive voice is problematic. I accept my responsibility to expose and defeat the predecites who seek to make my life and that of others unmanageable and even unlivable. That's another formulation. I admit, I commit, I am responsible, I agree to expose and defeat and so forth. These are some variations of a generic statement of commitment. So it's about committing, not so much admitting. It's also in the present tense. We admitted that we were powerless over 
alcohol. No, I admit in the present tense, dot, dot, dot. You see how it can develop. Now, my intention is to, as I said, convert each line of the steps to a generic formula for the great recovery. And I will post those conversions in the description, but they are not written in stone. I propose that we use them uh, as general points of agreement. But I advise that you yourself work out your own variations of those formulas as they unfold and try them out, talk them out, speak them aloud, talk, talk them through with someone else and find the language that fits you, the language that expresses exactly how you feel about the problem of the predicites, how you see it. So these formulas are flexible, they're not absolute, although I do believe that by proposing a generic set, I can set the standards upon which we can all agree in this movement. Correction, the standards upon which you and I can agree. And agreement is important in this movement. What I'm attempting to do here from the outset is to set out the principles of the great recovery. And agreement on those principles gives unity and solidarity to this movement. If it is a movement, if it can become a movement, and I strongly believe that it can. And then, of course, everyone has their own diverse opinions on various topics. And that's fine. You and I can agree to disagree on certain things. But unless we agree to agree on the framing principles of the great recovery, it will not have sufficient focus from the outset. It will not have sufficient targeting power. And that is something that it needs, as any movement does. So I'll see if I can provide a generic formula for the first step. And when you have that, I want you to bear in mind that it comes as a fill-in-the-blank formula. Just as the 12 steps of recovery were generated from AA, we admitted that we were powerless over fill in the blank. Well, it was alcohol, but then any number of other terms could be put in the blank. Overeating, gambling, narcotic addiction, and so forth. So it's the same here. The formula needs an initial generic proposition and variations, various iterations of the main proposition unfold as the movement unfolds. For example, I admit that I am prone to addiction to social media. Again, that's almost passive voice. I want to avoid passive voice because it lends itself very strongly to victim language. The words victim and powerless do not occur in any variations of these formulas. And as you go through this process, if you choose to go along with me, talk it out, have conversation with yourself or with someone else, as you go through it, you'll realize that the very act of bringing into language these expressions of the situation today from which you and I can recover, bringing into language exactly what you and I are recovering from is in itself a powerful act of recovery. Here's another shot. Maybe this is it. I agree to my unique responsibility to expose and defeat the attack of the predecites, which aims to render my life and that of others 
unmanageable, and even unlivable. Full stop. Let's say that's the generic formula. Notice how it changes the intention of the traditional formula. There's no powerlessness. You're not admitting something as if you were admitting to being a victim. You are agreeing to take responsibility for something. And remember the guideline of the great recovery movement. The outcome of the world drama turns on one life at a time. So it is your unique responsibility to change the outcome of the entire world drama. That is possible. That is the intention shared by everyone who participates in the great recovery. Is that all clear so far? Not said for now, but remember, as always, I leave you with the open invitation to meet me in the beauty that kills.